Hi gang, Rob here. It is the morning of 24 July 2013. Today's video is going to be another sort of knife history lesson. I don't know. <clears throat> I haven't paid attention much to my demographics lately on YouTube, but I got a feeling because this knife hobby of ours seems to span generations that there might be some younger fellows that follow this channel and sorry excuse the drink of coffee there they might tend to think that knife technology started last month or last year or the only good knives ever made are uh, <clears throat> one-handed opening tactical knives that deploy fast and they're lightweight carry and they are designed for thrusting and slashing and <clears throat> or or they might be another class of knives that are overbuilt tanks that you can chop down trees with well <clears throat> there was a time when a folding knife was carried every day by responsible grown men and even responsible young guys like eight nine ten years old <clears throat> because it was a tool that was needed in daily life for dudes there were things that needed to be cut packages that needed to be open strings and ropes and binding twine that needed to be cut wires that needed to be stripped mail that needed to be opened and it was very handy to have a small knife that you could drop into your pocket that slipped in and slipped out when you needed it <clears throat> and could be used for these daily tasks and just to show you how old I am <laughs> I've got some of these knives in my collection and one of my one of my best YouTube buddies Campfire Talk <clears throat> who kind of knows me a little bit he said you know I'd really like it if you do a, a video on some traditional knives we used to call these knives pocket knives but we know them now as slip joints because there are no there's no locking mechanism let's take a look at <clears throat> some of them let's take a look at one that you guys probably know uh, because uh, there are so many of us on YouTube who are, who are sort of uh, YouTube disciples of one nut and fancy we've all seen this one haven't we the Victorinox cadet an aluminum handled or alox handled version of the Swiss Army knife. <clears throat> you grab a hold of the blade with this little cut which is called a nail neck because your fingernail slips into it and you pull the knife out and it snaps via a back spring. See it move? Snaps open and stays open. <clears throat> we call that a slip joint because the knife slips against that spring forcing it out and then when it opens the spring pops into place on the flat area of the back of the knife tang it holds it open it doesn't lock there it just stays there you know for a <laughs> for a century or more that was enough for a folding knife <clears throat> because cutting forces push the knife in this direction there was really no perceived need for it to be locked so it couldn't be forced in that direction. <clears throat> it worked, guys, for the intended use. Here's, a, here's another one that indicates I've been doing this a while. Here's a little sort of novelty knife, maker unknown, blades made of carbon steel. <clears throat> we called this one a peanut. Well, why would we call it a peanut? Interesting how knives got their names back in the day what the knife resembled they named it as far as the pattern was concerned many many manufacturers made knives of this pattern and they called it a peanut it's little you know smaller than well it should be what about as big as your pinky yeah very tiny little gentleman's pocket knife has one clip point blade and these are carbon steel so you'll see some black at the base where the Knife engages the pivot and dirt and whatnot get in there. <clears throat> a 
So this clip or Bowie style blade was pretty common on these older pocket knives. And then you had a little tiny pen blade, pen knife. Actually a girl I used to date found this at a little antique little antique shop and she bought it for me for Christmas one year thus the red and green colors kind of a what do you call that like a decoupage scale <clears throat> pretty cool and then uh, well let's take a look at this one here's about a 25 year old knife <clears throat> you know we think of custom knives now here in the 21st century we think of things like uh, Todd Begg bodegas, you know, super high tech, super expensive, thousand dollar titanium frame locks. Well, you know, back when slip joints were popular, <clears throat> or when slip joints were state of the folding knife art, we had custom knives too. They didn't cost a thousand dollars. See, a regular old pocket knife back in the day folding slip joint used to cost five bucks a really good one like this little case stockman might have cost 15 or 20 <clears throat> and a custom slip joint folder like this beautiful parker edwards made in jacksonville florida two-bladed trapper was a whopping $100 with its nickel silver bolsters, <clears throat> brass frame, genuine sandbar stag scales, and Damascus steel blades. This might have cost 100 bucks. You talk about a sweet knife. Look at that. <clears throat> oh, here's an interesting blade I should show you. This is a, a blade style that used to be in the trapper pattern knives. <clears throat> it was called a spay blade. I'm not going to really share with you because there might be young viewers and women watching what this blade might have been used for, but hmm, does it look familiar at all? Back in the day, this was called a spay blade, S-P-E-Y. Today, we call it a reverse tanto. <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to wipe this one off a little bit. Now. We've talked about the three knives in this periphery. Let's talk about this one in the middle now. This is a knife called a, very creatively called a three blade stockman. This was your working man's knife pattern. And this was kind of a medium size one. It's about three and a half inches long, closed. They make them smaller in the case lineup, and they make them larger. But this is kind of the this would have been the most popular for EDC back in the day. They didn't know what EDC meant. They just know that they just knew that uh, if you were a guy and you left the house, you had something like this in your pocket. Uh, now, in the days of iPhones and iPhones and uh, minimalist wallets when guys leave the house with as little as possible because they're just not very prepared. They've been turned onto this new world of EDC stuff. <clears throat> you know, there was a time when men were men and they wouldn't have left the house with all their keys and a full wallet and uh, a pair of sunglasses and uh, a fingernail clipper and a pocket knife among other things. They didn't know that was their EDC system. They just knew that they were guys, and this is what guys did because guys had to do stuff during their day. 
<clears throat> and the Case Knife Company is one of the oldest and enduring makers of traditional slip joint knives. A lot of people made knives like this. Most of them are out of business or dead. But W.R. Case and Sons, who now, by the way, owns Zippo Knives, or Zippo Lighters, based in Bradford, PA, is still going strong. Because what they've done, brilliantly, by the way, is take an old company who made products that men carried with them all the time without fail. They've taken this product line into an age when that's kind of an obsolete concept. Or, <clears throat> among guys who do carry stuff like that, well, they generally carry things that are a little more modern and high-tech. So, Case has turned their old EDC lineup into a lineup of collectibles. And boy, do they make some cool stuff. <clears throat> They used to build these with carbon steel blades that would rust and turn black. and Now they make them with uh, surgical stainless steel. <clears throat> what do they call it? True Sharp? We think it's probably a 440A or something like that. Now let's look at the blade selection on this guy. Of course, the standard clip blade. You think Jim Bowie had much of an influence in 20th century knife design? <clears throat> even little tiny knives where the blade's not even three inches long look like a Bowie knife. That, that blade had to come in every one of these. <clears throat> and then we have the pen blade. Good for small tasks. And then here's another one, guys. Remember, we, we named them by what they look like. This is a sheep's foot blade. Great little utility knife. Now let's talk about the materials and the construction of these knives. <clears throat> no G10, no carbon fiber. Not even another rather high-tech material for knives of this age, no micarta, which is kind of like primitive G10. This knife is constructed on a brass frame. <clears throat> Why brass? Well, it does tarnish or dull over time, but brass and other copper alloys have this really cool property that makes them uh, desirable in folding knives. They sort of have this self-lubricating quality about them, which is why we have today's phosphor bronze washers in some of our modern knives. It also looks cool when it's juxtaposed against polished stainless steel or carbon steel as uh, these stainless steel back springs are and the nickel silver bolsters <clears throat> on the ends of the knife. These knives are built in layers and they're pinned or riveted together. In this case we have one large pin here that is the pivot for the back springs. We have two brass rivets holding on the uh, the blue dyed and jigged bone scales. And then we also have pins you can't see unless you get the light just right. You can't really pick them up in this light because they're polished and mated to the bolsters, but those are pinned on as well, and those pins are actually, you guessed it, the pivot pins. <clears throat> now what makes these knives cool, and the reason that they still sell, are because they're so historic. They were such a staple item uh, for all guys in America and in Europe as well. <clears throat> And the, especially case knives, you know, they were, uh, you know, if the Buck 110 was the state-of-the-art hunting folder in the 60s and 70s and 80s, the case slip joint knife 
in all its many, many configurations, was sort of the state of the art for the folding slip joint pocket knife. Often imitated, there were patterns that case knives made as well as many, many other companies. But, you know, not only was Case a brilliantly run company to endure the tests of time, they also made really, really high quality knives for what they are. You know, if you notice the fit and finish on a Case slip joint versus other competitors, <clears throat> look where the bone meets the bolsters. If you close your eyes and run your finger over this transition, you can't feel it. There are no gaps between bolster and scale. The bone is beautifully cut and beautifully fit, sanded, and polished to make this finished package. Notice just how it tapers smoothly from the swell in the middle of the knife to the ends. On this particular model, the ends of the bolsters are kind of knocked off. It's to make them disappear in your pocket. <clears throat> Every detail, brilliantly, brilliantly executed. And we end up with these wonderful little works of art. You know, and it doesn't really matter. There are some changes in processes over the years, but it doesn't really matter whether you're looking at a brand new case slip joint or whether you're looking at one that's made in the 60s. They could be identical. You know, you're going to have some differences, what steel was used, what process for finishing. If you notice, my knife here has sort of a roundish tip. Well, they were using... Uh, a tumbling media at the time that was too aggressive and they used it for a few years and it kind of tumbled the tip right off the knives so you end up with this sort of roundish tip tells you this knife was probably made in the late 90s to early 2000s new production on these is sort of back to super pointy tips which I actually kind of prefer One thing you can usually tell a case knife by versus some less expensive or less well-made competitors is the, the sound they make when they close. Uh, you don't push them in, you get them started and they snap shut. Look at the beautiful jigging. That's <laughs> when I was Before I was a car salesman, guys, 20 years ago, I was in manufacturing and machining and stuff like that. Uh, on, in mass production where we had this thing that held a part while it was being machined we called that a jig uh, this is blue jigged bone meaning it's held in a fixture and a tool takes these little chunks out of it in a prescribed way well <clears throat> before I left the manufacturing world we couldn't call it a jig anymore uh, <laughs> for reasons of political correctness, and now those are called fixtures. But Case refuses to follow convention, especially when it's stupid, and this knife is still called a knife with jigged bone scales. Not fixtured bone, jigged bone. Look at the beautiful enameled shield, my favorite uh, identifier on a Case knife handle. <clears throat> they do that in many styles. I like this one. I just thought you guys would like to see this. And by the way, um, you're saying, you young guys, well, sure, they look cool and they get some historic value, but you know they probably don't cut you know, like these new knives do. I mean, it, it, they use inexpensive stainless steel, and you know the, they're just not, uh, that's no spider co. Well, is it? I don't know. Let's see. Let's grab some phone book paper. Now I've sharpened this one. And you know what that probably means, but let's see. Oh, what? That's like some old geezer's knife. How could, how could it be doing this? Let's, huh, that one cuts. Let's see. What about this, uh, this, this handmade custom here? Let's see if that cuts. I don't actually know. This is a freehand sharpened knife. I haven't really cut phone book paper with it before, but let's see. Oh. It does. It cuts.
Well, you know, it doesn't cut that great. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> well, guys, I just thought you might like to see that. A little cool knife history this morning. Somebody asked me in one of my videos not too long ago, too bad you don't have a cadet with green scales. Well, yes, I do. This isn't the one that I carry every day. This is my green Alox Cadet that I kind of like to keep nice. It has seen a little bit of pocket time, but I bought the regular silver one to beat up every day and put this one away. Because you can't just have one Cadet, right? Well, guys, hope you enjoy your day. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope you liked the video. Remember, the word is sharp.